Hello everyone. Today I'll be introducing you what are application programming interfaces. So as in the last video we have seen uh, what is meant by IoT and how do we actually generate and use the architecture of IoT. So in this video I'll be introducing you the APIs that are going to be acting as an attachment to our IoT platform and the architecture. So by the end of this session students will be able to define the concept of APIs specifically for IoT. These are the outlines. Let us first go through the definition of API and then I'll take you through a quick example just to make you familiar with how an API works in a general scenario. Basically, uh, to begin with, what is an API? Just try to recall, uh, like, what do we actually mean by a subroutine in a computer programming language? You can pause this video for a while and just think on this. Now to proceed ahead, subroutine is nothing but a piece of code that is written uh, in a separate portion of a code or a programming language. Uh, and this piece of code is generally utilized multiple number of times. So any piece of code or any operation like maybe a sort of addition or a, a simple uh, programming language code which is going to perform an operation like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division or any arithmetic operation which you are going to frequently use again and again. So such kind of uh, codes are actually defined as a functions or methods in any programming language and we simply call them as subroutines and later on whenever we need the task to be performed, we simply call them in our main routine. So similar to this one, APIs act as a subroutine uh, and which can be actually called by the browser of a client who is trying to access some sort of content on a web browser. So let's uh, try to understand what is an application programming interface with the help of a simple example. So as you can see, we have a person here uh, who is trying to access a web resource. He's actually trying to access a website. Maybe let us say that he's trying to access his email by uh, going to the website called Google. Then, um, so this is just a uh, client number one and you can consider there are other computers and other clients who are actually trying to access this particular website uh, through internet connection. So this is client number one and client number two as you can see. So the, both these clients are trying to access this particular website. Now for instance let us say that this website is asking for a login. So login in the sense for example just imagine that you are trying to uh, access the Gmail portal of your own username, then probably you are first of all prompted to enter your credentials like username and password. So whenever you try to enter the username and password, what happens to the backend is that particular URL or so called the uniform resource locator or in short a URL is going to contain the API. And what is this API in turn going to do? For example, uh, as I have adopted this particular diagram from a link called restful.io so it's a folder here it has a website and that website called restful.io has a main directory inside which we have another folder which is named with this particular uh, naming so whenever i try to access a website i need to uh, simply go through the login uh, part of that particular website so let's move ahead and see this thing in more detail so you can imagine now a client is trying to access a website. What he's exactly doing is he's trying to send a request to a server. This server is nothing but a web server. Maybe let us say it's a Google web server. It is trying to access the request content. I mean, uh, we are going to look into detail like how this request and response uh, content is going to be elaborated and how to deal with the header information of this one in a short while but just uh, stick to the slide like I am first of all requesting to the web server and web server in turn is going to process this particular request and then it is going to respond me back with some sort of data whatever I am requesting. So in the due process of this request and re response being sent by the server and by the client there are a couple of things that happen. So this is the HTTP request composition. So a request especially the HTTP protocol which is generally used for uh, any kind of online requests or posting kind of informations that you try to actually make. Uh, all these things actually work under the HTTP protocol which lies in the TCP IP uh, OSI model. 
So HTTP actually stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, which relies on these two uh, things, so-called request and response cycle. So the request cycle of a HTTP is composed of four things. The first one is uniform resource locator, like as you can see, uh, www.maybegoogle.com. That's the URL. Inside this URL, uh, I mean inside the frame format of this particular HTTP request, you have a second format, I mean the second uh, entity, which says method. Methods are basically of four types. The first method is get, the second one is post, third one is put, and fourth one is delete. I mean, these are the four methods uh, which form or which compose this particular HTTP request by uh, uh, by mentioning it, uh, by mentioning this particular keyword in the method uh, frame of your HTTP request. So depending upon whether you are posting the information to the website or you are requesting some sort of information from the website or you want to modify some content on the website or you want to delete some content on the website. These are the four methods which are allowed by the HTTP request. So we will go through them in detail in a couple of minutes. So similarly, the third entity of your HTTP request is uh, known as a header. Header actually contains all the user agents, like uh, it would contain uh, what data format is going to be used for transmitting the request and receiving the response. So basically, there are two data formats, XML and uh, JSON. So we will go through the JSON example in a couple of minutes again. So the fourth entity of this HTTP request is nothing but a body. Body means, for example, if a client uh, is searching for an image of uh, Internet of Things on Google, then whatever image that you actually get uh, in response from the website is nothing but uh, the content of the body. So you can imagine like the body of this particular uh, HTTP request is going to contain all the information which would be displayed probably on the web browser or the web screen. So once we have understood this request, now let us see what the server is going to respond by posting this HTTP response composition. Here, what we have is the status code. So the response code, which is given by the server and posted to the client, contains three parts. So the first part is status code. The status code, for example, if the user is requesting for an IoT image on the Google server, and if the Google server, pro while processing, if it identifies and if it finds a match, then probably it is going to return the code, status code, inside this HTTP response as a success. For instance, if it doesn't find any match, I mean, he is trying to access some XYZ kind of an image, and that particular XYZ image is not available on the website or so-called the web server, then it is going to return a status code called 401. So there are a variety of HTML codes. We are not going to go into the details, but just uh, as an example, this is a status code which indicates whether the content is available or it is uh, being matched or not on the web server. The second entity of uh, HTTP response is the header, which contains the content type. As I have earlier discussed, I mean, I have quoted, uh, that is, the content type is going to be either of JSON or XML, which is the worldwide used formats nowadays for very quick transmission between the server and the client machine. So I'll show you an example. Again, the body contains the actual data, like you are whether browsing some sort of web content or some other part. So now, uh, before proceeding ahead, let's have a quick example of how a JSON appears. So JSON actually stands for JavaScript Object Notation, which is a very simple notation, like uh, it has just two things. The first one being the key, and the second one being the value. So for example, if I am uh, talking about the type of pizza I'm actually trying to order, then the key is going to be crust, which indicates the type of crust I'm ordering and what is going to be the value i mean what kind of crust i'm expecting in my pizza order so this is the value so i want an original crust based pizza so let's have a, a small uh, example where there is a client who is trying to access a pizza website and he wants to order certain things by posting the content with the help of a http protocol that happens by default through the browser so let us say that he has ordered something and if it has uh, to respond, I mean the web server has to respond in return to this particular client, then probably you need to discuss. I mean it's not possible like uh, two people are discussing 
the question being asked in english and the answer is being given in chinese so it is going to create some sort of uh, some kind of noise whether the information is transferred whether the information is genuine or not if you don't stick to a particular communication media or a, com a standard communication protocol then everything seems to be noise so just to avoid such kind of situations here we have the same example client is trying to communicate with a server so this server has to accept i mean there has to be deal between this client and the server that the formats that both the people are going to share and use has to be either json or xml so what this browser does whenever the client is trying to request uh the header of the http request format is going to have the content type mentioned as json so it is mentioned something like uh, application slash json and in response if server allows the client to talk uh, with a json format then probably it is going to return back like content type equals to application slash json so here the deal is finished and henceforth whatever communication happens between the client and the server uh, it is going to happen with a json data format so this is how uh, the communication happens as an example if uh, we wanted to design an api for our own website uh, uh, by considering the same uh, pizza ordering example this is how it would look like whenever i want to get some data from the website i'm going to simply put uh, the ip address of the site like maybe www.example.com/orders so whenever my web server finds that i am posting slash orders it is going to show me uh, the list of existing orders which i have already given similarly the rest of the things and this is how we actually generate an api and these are the references that are used for this ppt Thank you.